Sue Ellen Roberts embarked on her career later in life. In moving to New York City, she was hired by Gucci. She catapulted to an executive position as the head of the Gucci Galleria, a private VIP floor in the Gucci headquarters on Fifth Avenue. This was the jewel in the crown of the Gucci empire. She worked directly with Aldo Gucci, the chairman of the board. The Galleria housed major Italian works of art, sculptures, furs, and more. The display of jewels and extraordinary leather goods were magnificent. Suellen entertained heads of state, celebrities, and VI clients from all over the world. In the next phase of her life, God called Suellen Roberts to do a television show, which garnered millions of viewers. This led to running a TV station and the senior vice presidency of a broadcasting corporation. Along the way, she produced and syndicated three television shows, which included the Women of Faith TV special at the Alamo Dome in Texas and Joy Matters of the Heart. In 2002, God put on Sue Ellen Roberts' heart to begin Christian Women in Media Association. It has grown exponentially to a global ministry which has sent her worldwide. During her current tenure as founder and president, in 2018, she became executive producer and visionary for the documentary of Orville Rogers' life called Flying High for the Glory of God. Currently, God has given her another platform to executive produce a feature film about the adventures and explorations of John D. Morris of the Institute of Creation Research. To Ellen Roberts' desire to glorify God in all he has allowed her to do, may lives be touched and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hi, this is Destiny Arbor with Destiny X. Wow, we just saw that incredible video by Sue Ellen Roberts. I'm going to introduce our guest to you, and she's going to share a little bit about that video as we go further into our interview. Let's welcome Sue Ellen Roberts, the founder of Christian Women in Media. Sue Ellen is going to also tell you a little bit about herself. Um, she had, wears many hats. She has been doing ministry and media and television for years. She is a general in the faith. She is a prayer warrior and just a strong, mighty woman of God who is a great mentor to many. Welcome, Sue Ellen. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Destiny. It's so wonderful to be with you. And I'm just excited about this opportunity of being on your television show and just uh, having the opportunity to be with you and share what God has done. Yes, amen. I'm so thrilled and honored that you're with us. I want to talk today to you about your topic, Gucci to Gospel. Tell us a little bit about that um, so people understand what that, where that came sure. from. Sure. Well, the title came uh, because I was with Gucci. And it's an interesting story how that came about. And if it's okay, I'll tell you about it. Uh, it's uh, amazing how God works. I had just moved to uh, New York City and I uh, was, uh, uh, had decided to get a job. So I was walking up Fifth Avenue uh, with my little volunteer resume because I was a mom and hadn't worked professionally uh, uh, for a long time. So I stopped at Tiffany's and they wanted to hire me, but it was just for Christmas. So I thought to myself, well, if I'm gonna do something, I think I'll keep trying uh, rather than just part time. Uh, so I went on up a couple more blocks and when I when back then uh, Gucci was at 5th and 54th Street since they moved up on Fifth Avenue. So uh, I went in there and they hired me. I mean, I was really shocked because I didn't have a whole lot of experience and I wasn't multilingual at the time which was important in uh, uh, dealing with all sorts of uh, people that uh, came from all different countries. So uh, I started out uh, in sales on the main floor and you know we had to uh, wear uniforms. They fitted me with a uniform and they had a wardrobe lady and all. So I changed in the locker room and I thought it was interesting because everybody was stuffing their mink coats into the lockers, <laughs> changing in the locker room, you know how New York was. 
was back then mm -hmm. with uh, with fur coats. Now now uh, they don't wear them anymore, of course. Right. But uh, uh, so it was a, a really interesting experience dealing with worldwide people that came in from all over the globe to shop on Fifth Avenue. And so I was there for a period of time, but I was hand selected by Aldo Gucci himself uh, to run the Gucci Galleria. And that was the jewel in the crown of the Gucci empire. Wow. And so it was an amazing place. Uh, it was uh, designed by Giulio Savio, an Italian architect. It had laminated uh, uh, walls and it was uh, built uh, for uh, 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 using it as a PR place, but as well as entertaining big customers. So we had Rolls Royce luggage. We had uh, high-end uh, leather goods. We had furs. We had jewels. And I was responsible for the jewel display in the windows and then every night I had to take it down and lock it in the safe and I'm talking millions of dollars worth of jewels of diamonds and rubies and sapphires and then I had a maid and we served on Gucci China and I gave an art tour because Aldo Gucci who uh, uh, the New York Times uh, called him the Michelangelo of, of mm -hmm. merchandising this was his baby uh, this Gucci Galleria. So uh, we, he had his private art collection on exhibition in the Galleria. So I would give uh, customers um, uh, tours as well of the art. But the key thing is not everybody could gain entry to that floor. You had to come up with a leather glass lined elevator and have a gold key that the uh, good customers got, clients uh, received, and you put that gold key and it was a locked floor. And uh, they usually would alert me, the people on the main floor, that someone is here or coming up or a celebrity coming in uh, many times, we had security come in and sweep the floor, as they say, sweep it, meaning investigating to make sure that there was no improper uh, things uh, that would harm the person they were trying to protect before the person came up. So uh, we also had parties before the ball. And it was an interesting experience of meeting the creme de la creme of New York plus internationals, uh, international celebrities as well. Wow, wow. What was your greatest memory of working at Gucci? I'm just curious for my own self. Uh, my greatest memory, I would say, was working for the, directly for the man himself, Aldo Gucci. And he's the one that brought, brought it and made it a brand. Uh, he brought it to the U.S., started out in the uh, uh, St. Regis Hotel, had a small shop uh, catering to the wealthy mm -hmm. and uh, high quality leather goods at a higher price, of course. And he's the one that expanded it worldwide. His brother uh, owned 50% at the time, but he was the one that was the visionary that took it from mm -hmm. uh, his father, Gigi Gucci Gucci, started out as a saddle making uh, a company of quality saddles and he took it and brought it and made it a global um, empire. So this jewel in the crown uh, and Fifth Avenue, uh, many times he would bring people in, but my fondest memory was working for him because he was a visionary. He had original ideas. He knew how to market. He knew how to pr produce these magnificent uh, leather goods, as well as fashion, as well as all of that. Uh, they had a factory in Italy, and I was, of course, flew to Italy uh, for uh, many times for various uh, functions that we had to do. Wow, that's great. And it's still a very well-known name today. Yes, it is. I want to ask you, how did you wind up in television? Well, <laughs> I, mean, I was a retailer. Friends. What did I know about television, you know? Uh, but Davis. God does interesting things. You know, we just can never, uh, uh, we don't know how God is going to lead us because uh, we just have to be willing and open. So I went back to, after living in Europe for a while, after Gucci, I lived in Europe for a while, and then wound up back in Virginia to help my sister care for my ailing mother. 
So I was uh, heading down the road to go to a friend's birthday party, and I had an epiphany in the car where I knew that God had spoken to my heart. Uh, and what he said was, excuse me, Sue Ellen, you need to get into television. And my real spiritual uh, response was, but God, I don't know anything about television. So, but I knew he had spoken to me. So I had to step out in faith, take some production courses, uh, uh, you know, learn how to direct and run camera and be on set and do all that stuff. And then I started my own little show. And guess what happened? God moved in a mighty way. Uh, and uh, I learned, you know, you learn on the spot, aren't you? You know, you're a producer. So tell me, you know that, right, Destiny? I mean, the Holy Spirit was my teacher and trainer. I was the same way. I don't know how to do a television show. I don't know how to do a magazine. <laughs> But he will, if it, if it's, if you put the desire in your heart and you're right, he'll work exactly. it on Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, so uh, it's, it's amazing how God works. So I started uh, this small production in public access and I was uh, at a Bible study and I was chatting it up with the girls and saying, uh, you know, I was so excited about doing this television program. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, many of them, you know, wanted to volunteer and help. And one gal came up and said, I want to help you. And I said, uh, sure, come on down to the studio and I'll put you to work. And she said, no, I want to help you financially. And I said, oh, wonderful. So, so she said, what's your budget? I gave it to her. And it was just a little minuscule budget. But you know what? God provided. Yeah. She was my angel. She provided uh, the financing for the next step uh, when I went to the next level of production. And then when I went to the high level network production, she provided for that as well. And God moved in a mighty way. I knew it was the Lord because he takes, this is when you have to depend totally on the Lord, when you don't know anything about what he's calling you to do. Right. And so the whole thing was funded, and I went from a little public access show to uh, being on major networks in 100 million households. And this was someone that was a retailer with Gucci. I didn't know anything about TV, but God, mm -hmm. he's the one yeah. that as I was obedient to him and followed him, God made the way and God provided. And it's so exciting. And I think whoever is watching today, you're trusting God for provision for you, for whatever it is that he's leading you to do. And as he leads, he provides. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't always come quickly. Maybe you're having to wait, but we learn while we're waiting. But God, if he's spoken to you, he's faithful in every single area and i've seen it time and time again yes and i believe that's where that favor came in you were obedient to the call and he provided that lady to fund you the projects yes yes that's right that's right well now i have to ask you let's shift gears a little bit sure after television uh i, I how did you come up how did you how did christian women in media come to be well, uh, I was involved, uh, you know, as, as a television uh, producer. And then from there, I ran a TV station and I became the senior vice president of a broadcasting corporation. But I was, uh, I was involved, I was invited to be, uh, go to NRB, National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And I wound up on the TV committee. But one morning I was living in Charlottesville, Virginia at the time. I'm now in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I, uh, as I was praying, I had such a desire to connect with other women in media. At that period of time, it was a, a male dominated industry in Christian and even secular media. So I began to call women that I knew that were in broadcasting and uh, TV in television, because that's what I was doing at the time. 
And so I began to call around after God uh, put on my heart to begin something. So you start with who you know. And uh, so God led uh, to four women that were real, really interested in starting something with me. One of them had a place to have it. We did a national uh, thing, a national reception. One of them had a budget for food. One of them was a marketing person. And the other one was Sue Ellen, who was the organizer. So uh, God was faithful and that's how we started. And, and as we're obedient, again, many times you have to start small yeah, and okay. then you grow with it. And today we are 20 years old and God has provided in amazing ways. We have uh, United States uh, connect groups in uh, 16 cities. We've had an international outreach in amazing ways until COVID. I was traveling to Europe for the last five years. And also uh, God is moving and expanding our membership for Christian women in media association. And we have uh, amazing an amazing conference coming up yeah uh, for two days uh this fall okay. yes that's right so and you're coming right destiny yes, i've already booked yeah. my ticket i will be there yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful i'll look forward to seeing you in the flesh <laughs> so uh it's just amazing to me we just have to hear from the lord first of all know it's god and move out in what he's calling us to do and i can't say that it's real easy Oftentimes, we all have our ups and downs, but as we stand committed to him, as we stand strong, knowing that he's called us to himself, first of all, and then called us to his work, and in uh, our industry, it's the media avenue, and it, so it, start, it wasn't just television. We expanded into uh, radio, social media, publishing. Uh, you mention it. If it's media, we've incorporated that into uh, our, um, our organization. So God is blessing in amazing ways. And I just want to say it's a wonderful organization. Um, I'm so honored to be a part. I, it's really opened up so many doors for me just being connected and it's just sisterhood. I mean, the fellowship and the commitment, as you said, and everyone helping one another. Um, you know, I always say I found my tribe when I found. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love it. And the thing that we're known for uh, is we're known for our love, yeah. our love for each other and our willingness to help each other. And that's unusual. I know many women's organizations or it's a competition, but yeah. that's not how we operate. Right. We are willing to impart what we know to others. And that's part of it is equipping, uh, equipping women in the projects that they're doing and helping, as well as inspiring. When it says Christian, we are Christian and we stand on the word of God. We inspire uh, through uh, uh, many women that speak. We do equipping with seminars. Uh, we have Zoom. Uh, we have Zoom. We have something going on every month as well as a national conference. Yes. So uh, it's great. Well, tell us about your current media project. Well, you never know what God is going to do. And uh, I think uh, you the, saw the video earlier in the roll in. So tell us. That, that yes, video. yes. That, that the video gave different things about my life with uh, production and so forth. But uh, what I'm working on now is an exciting project. It is uh, called Struck. It's a streaming series. And it's about uh, two people. One from the Old Testament, Noah and the flood, and then John D. Morris, who did 13 expeditions up Mount Ararat in search of Noah's Ark. And the what happened to him along the way is incredible. The story is amazing. So we are intertwining uh, Noah's story and John uh, Morris's story. Uh, intertwining it into an eight episode streaming series and we're in development right now and so we're excited about that we're doing uh, getting ready to produce a video so we can do crowdfunding for struck 
the series. And so God uh, just has moved me forward. And I have partnered with uh, Amanda Llewellyn and Wes Llewellyn of 4L Films. They're well known in the industry and have had a ton of experience. So we're partnering together. And one of the things, Destiny, that we're doing is uh, a prayer call. We have a prayer call for people that are interested in praying uh, with us. John D. Morris, Dr. Morris is on the prayer call every week and his wife, Dalta. And we want to cover this project uh, with prayer because that, that's so important. And I found that with everything I've done. Uh, that pr the prayer portion is so important. With Christian Women in Media, we cover it in prayer. We have a prayer team. We have a prayer call. With Heart of Mercy Mission, it's covered in prayer. And with this struck the series, God is faithful uh, to, to lead us and guide us. So we're in the process of development, raising money to do this uh, video for the crowdfunding and uh, trusting God to provide. And so I've seen it happen again and again. And the key is for uh, us, all of us, is to hear from the Lord. That means we have to know his voice. That means we need to spend time with the Lord in prayer, in Bible reading, getting to know God. And I found that the more you do it, the more you want. Mm -hmm. And so we become more sensitive to hearing the voice of God. Now, the way I hear it is in my heart. I know God has spoken to me. I journal. I always put down the date and the time so I can look back and see the faithfulness of God, and to see it, it hasn't been Sue Ellen moving in these projects. It's been God giving me the vision and then people coming along as a team to move things forward. So I'm excited about what God has done, but what he will do. But I still say the key is knowing God yeah. and knowing him intimately. That's beautiful. Wow. Congratulations. I can't wait to see the series. I can't wait to watch it when it comes out. I want to ask you, as we're coming to our closing time, I wish we had so much more time because I know there's so much in you to share with our listeners and viewers. What's the most important principle that you would leave or take away for our viewers today? Well, what I, uh, yeah, I'd love to reiterate because that seems to be my bottom line of everything I do and say, as I, I think I mentioned to you earlier before the broadcast that I look back and 10 years ago, I'm still, I may have different scenarios in my life, but it's still the basis yeah. is walking with God, the intimate relationship with God that God uh, desires for us to glorify him. And I think one of the ways that's so important, sometimes all of us, we're busy, we have a million things going on, our mind is going a million miles an hour. But for me, it helps to have music, I play the piano, but uh, also listening to anointed worship music sets the tone for that prayer time and that time of reading the word of God. And as we come before him, he changes us. Yeah. Something happens. The Holy Spirit touches our, touches our lives, touches our spirits as we're uh, uh, worshiping him, as we're even waiting on him and not saying anything. That's a big thing, and which is difficult difficult for, for us to do today, but as we wait on him, as we hear from him, and I would say, do not do anything. Don't move forward with what you think. Make sure that you hear from the Lord and that he's calling you to do this next step. Amen. Amen. That's speaking to me as well. I received that. Very, very <laughs> powerful. So as we're coming to a close, um, we'll have Sue information at the bottom of the screen of how to get in touch with you, how to help support her upcoming projects. And as we come to a close, would you mind praying us out? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Heavenly Father, we bless your name today. And I thank you for each and every one that's watching and listening today. I thank you, Father, that we can glorify you in everything we do. 
as I, I pray that you would turn hearts to you. And if there's someone that doesn't know you, that they would uh, walk and receive you into their life today by confessing their sin and asking Jesus to come into their lives. Father, I pray for those that know you, if you're a believer today, that God would tra transform your life as you walk with him day by day, as you listen, as you read, as you pray, as you hear. May you move forward in uh, ways that you would never expect. And we thank you, God, that you're a faithful God, and we love you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in today to our special broadcast with Sue Allen Roberts. Until next time, God bless you. You can reach us at destinyx.tv. Hi, I'm Destiny Yarbrough, founder of Destiny X Media Productions. We want to help you launch that media project. Has God placed those desires inside your heart to launch that project? Television, podcasting, radio, even writing a book, being an author, we can help you get to that next level. We have resources available for you to get to that level and launch that project. So if you're interested in hosting a conference, hosting a retreat, starting that television program, starting that podcast, allow us to help you produce it, promote it, and get it off the ground. You can reach me at destinyx.tv and we would love to help you get that project up and running.